Ronco. <laughs> Dad, come on, get us out of this. Dad, come on. I can't get all me out. I think it's Regency. <laughs> we work two or three hundred quid. I'll oh, sod it then. <laughs> Heart attack. <laughs> heart attack? Well, it won't be for overworking, that's for sure. Didn't you hear me calling you? I must have went while the werewolf was having a go at the bird. What with her screaming and him howling, you didn't stand one chance. Here, I was watching that. Well, you're not now. I'm home. I want my tea. God, it's marvellous, that, isn't it? I'm out flogging my guts out all day, and you're sat here all day watching werewolves biting bits out of birds. <laughs> that is not a fair distribution of labour. Well, there's nothing else to do. You could clean this place up for a start. It looks like a junkyard out there. <laughs> and this house is just as bad. If it one for the wall in between, I wouldn't know where the yard finishes and the house starts. <laughs> well, I'm not putting up with it. I really am not. You're not sitting here all day enjoying yourself. Enjoying myself? Watching that? Bloody hard work, that, mate. <laughs> That's the smallest screen in the world. I reckon Gulliver brought it back from one of his travels. <laughs> when are we getting a new set? I'm trying to pick one up off the round. We picked that one up off the round, didn't we? 1937. <laughs> you promised me you'd have gone to buy me a new one. I said when we can afford it. You can afford it. You've been saving up long enough. How about that 300 quid you've got stuffed down your spare gum boots? How did you know? <laughs> it's still there. You have no right going down my gum boots. <laughs> the dirty little hands of yours. I could get off of each foot. <laughs> Why, it's a lovely new television, that would. 23-inch screen, everything in colour. Oh, I've set me heart on one of them. If I had a colour television set, I wouldn't want anything else for the rest of my day. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not having one. They're a waste of money. Besides, I've got that saved up for something far more important. Such as? I'm going to buy a car. A car? What do you want to buy a car for? Because I haven't got one. <laughs> I've always wanted one. Everybody's got a car except me. That's ridiculous. That. I should have a car at my age. I mean, what chance do I stand with birds without transport? I mean, they don't want to know you if you ain't got a car. Thank you for a lovely evening, Muriel. How do you want to go on? By horse and cart or underground? <laughs> well, what bird is going to put out with that? Yeah, if you had a colour television, they wouldn't want to go on. Look, I'm not wasting my life sat in front of a television set. I'm too young for that. Well, I've got to get about a bit. Yeah. On these roads, it'll take you half an hour to get down to the end of the street. Nah, it's no use having a car these days. Before the war, that was the time. Yeah, nothing on the road then. I had one. You had? How could you afford a car? Well, we got it on the knock, didn't we? Five quid, my car calls me. What model was it? Triumph Nat. <laughs> <laughs> what memories. A hot summer day, the hood down, the open road before you, and a bit of crumpet leaning up against your gear. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's what I want. I used to be changing gear all day long. <laughs> I've got through more gear boxes than you've had hot dinners. <laughs> oh, those were the days. Four gallons of petrol, eight bobs, straight down to Brighton, seven and six bed and breakfast. Tanner for the chambermaid and fourpence for a packet of whatnots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss 
massive society, they don't know what day it is. <laughs> they ought to ask them others. You dirty old devil. <laughs> now, you see, you've had your life. Me, me, I've had nothing. You've had it all. Not me, I'm expecting to sit here watching television. Well, I've got to make up for lost time, mate. I'm going to buy a car and put it about a bit. I'm taking delivery first thing in the morning. I don't want a car, I want a television set. I don't care what you want. It's my money. I've been saving it. I'm going to buy a car. You won't get me in it. Oh, no, I won't. It's only got two seats. <laughs> <laughs> me and the <a> bird. <laughs> you can run behind if you like. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get a wiggle on, though. It does 120 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Typically you, that is. Doesn't matter about me. I've never asked you for much in my life. And now, when there's something I really want to brighten up me last years, I'll get the thumbs down. <laughs> my own fault, I suppose. If I'd saved up some of the money I spent on you since you were a baby, I could buy my own television set. Look, have you spent on me? You've had back ten times over. I even gave you the meat off me plate during the rationing. Only when you couldn't find your teeth. <laughs> Look at my national health stamps, you wouldn't have any choppers now. That's right, go on, bring that up again, throw it in my face, remind me I'm living here on your charity. Look, I don't mind keeping you, that is my duty, I realise that. No, don't say duty, I don't want that. If you can't do it out of love, don't do it at all. Oh, I, I didn't mean duty, I, mean, I don't mind looking after you. I mean, I'm your son, that's what I'm here for. But it's just that I sometimes want to get something out of life for myself, that's all. Not too much to ask, is it? No, of course not. It just hurts me, that's all, when I think of what other sons do for their fathers. I just wonder where I went wrong, that's all. <laughs> Charlie Miller bought his father a new colour television set. He's a good boy, that Charlie Miller. <laughs> Well, no doubt, if I had 15 girls on the game, I could go around buying a car television sets. You go blimey, he's done ten years' polish, he's got three dodgy strip clubs, he is the biggest villain in West London, and everyone round here holds him out as an example. The vicar thinks highly of him. He gave a lovely altar cloth to the church. He nicked it from the one in Ipswich, didn't he? <laughs> I bet he didn't give him the silver candlesticks, Val, did he? Now, they went the same way as the oil painting. He had them away a bit sharpish. Daniel in the lion's den is in somebody else's now. <laughs> Look, you may not have as much as Charlie Miller's dad, but you've never had any bent gear off for me. What thanks do I get for it? Charlie Miller gave his dad a colour television. I mean, is that what you want? Is it, you want me to go bent? No, of course I don't. Then where's your sense of values gone then? I, I mean, I could have joined Charlie Miller's mob when I was nine years old. You used to give me a clatter on the ear for even talking to him. And quite right, too. He was a bad influence. Then what are you getting on about, Dad? Because if a rotten, no-good piece of scum like him can look after his old dad, it don't say much for you, does it? <laughs> I see. So that's what you think of me, is it? Well, it's no worse than the value you put on me. I'm not even worth the price of a new television set. That doesn't see much point in carrying on, really, then, does that? None at all. Now we've got down to the nitty-gritty. Now we've finally ripped aside this hypocritical facade of family love. We expose it for the ghastly charade it really is. <laughs> Obviously, one of us should go. Yeah, me. I'm not going to sit here looking at that bleeding silly thing. <laughs> right, good. Clear off. Go on, is she? All right. I'll go and get me things packed. Good. That shouldn't take long. One mangle and a poe. <laughs> <laughs> Where you going? Mind your own business. I got friends. I don't need you. Yeah. Never have. You go around to Charlie Miller's dad, then. You could sit there watching his television. You've probably got one in a bog as well. <laughs> All nicked. Well, all I have to say to you is this. If you get down to Brighton in that rotten old car of yours, and if you're doing 120, I hope your bleeding brakes fail. <laughs> Thank you. Charming to the last. I shall always treasure this moment. <laughs> and up yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I know we'll be back five minutes after late night lineup. <laughs> but why do I always have to feel so guilty? You can open your eyes now, Muriel. Oh! <laughs> what do you think? You're not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I, I got it this morning. I could do 120 miles an hour. Mm, you are coming up in the world. It's a lot better than the awesome car. <laughs> I don't blame you not wanting to go out on that. But I thought with this, you and I could make some beautiful music together. <laughs> I like fast cars. Speed does something to me, you know. It makes me go, oh! Inside. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 about the weekend, then. I don't suppose... Why not? I'll pick you up on Saturday. We'll go down to Brighton. All right, then. At ten o'clock, your place. Bring an overnight bag, eh? <laughs> I look forward to it. Johnny. Harold? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> See you Saturday, then. <laughs> Bye. I got her. That you, my little dog. <laughs> if she performs half as well as you do, it'll be money well spent. <laughs> kind of television. Let's see how twit. <laughs> I wonder where he is. <laughs> oh, I suppose Charlie Miller's dad took pity on him. He's probably round there watching play school. <laughs> oh, what's he's put a scratch on it? <laughs> Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning. Mr. Harold stepped home. Yes? We'd like a word with you, sir. Now, look, it ain't nicked. I bought it. I got a receipt. It's paid for. No, it's nothing like that. Is Mr. Albert stepped home, your father? Yeah. Well, what's wrong? Well, I'm sorry to inform you that he was picked up last night by... But he, he's innocent. He's not a member of the Miller <laughs> no, He just went out there to watch television. Oh, look, we had a rousey, and he, he walked out. Oh, he, he's as honest as a day he's long. He's, he's an old soldier. He got medals. No, 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 sir. I'm sorry to tell you that he was found early this morning in an exhausted state on the canal towpath. What? Well, it seems he'd been wandering about all night and finally collapsed. Oh, my God. Where is he? Well, he was taken to the West London Hospital, suffering from exposure. Exposure? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it doesn't seem right for you to allow the poor old gentleman to wander around all night in this sort of weather. Well, I didn't know. No. Now, you uh, had a row, you say? Yes. What about, may I ask? Family matter, perhaps? Private? Oh, well, no. He wanted me to buy him a colour television set. Ah. <laughs> ah, yes, it's a boon to the old folks' television. And I don't suppose you had the money to buy it for him, eh? Well, yes, <laughs> I did. I wanted to buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see you've got your car. Yes. I got it this morning. And the old fellow's in hospital. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, well, you uh, mustn't blame yourself, sir. These things do happen. Yes, well, uh, excuse me, I'll go along and see. If you'd like to come with us, sir, we do have a car outside. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Oh, by the way, sir. You will get a new road fund licence before you take it out, won't you? Huh? It's out of date. I'll pay 25 quid for it. I'll give it to the fellow. I'm not... Yes, 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 of course I will, yes. <laughs> good, good. Well, come along, then. Let's go and see if the poor old gentleman's made any progress. Come along, sir. We'll have the klaxon on, Johnson. <laughs> How is he, Doctor? Are you the son? Yes. That'll be all for now, Nurse. There's nothing much more we can do at the moment. Let me know immediately if there's any deterioration. 
<laughs> How did he come to be wandering the streets like that? We had a row and he left town. Ah, that would explain it. He's obviously had a traumatic shock. That would be it. Allied to the exposure, that would account for his condition. What condition? I'm afraid your father is suffering from amnesia. Loss of memory. Well, now what it means. <laughs> right. Fortunately, we found a letter with his address on it, and that's how we contacted you. Do I know who he is? No. Has he been it on or not? <laughs> no, there are no confusions on the head at all. But don't you remember me or, or where he lives or nothing? No. Possibly because he doesn't want to. What do you mean by that? His amnesia could be self-induced. It sometimes happens when people want to blot out very unpleasant memories. May I ask some personal questions, Mr. Steptoe? Yes, yes, of course. You live together? Yeah. Just the two of you, your mother is dead. Yeah, when I was little. <laughs> You're all he has got. Yeah. You go out to work and he stays at home. Yeah, every day. <laughs> How'd you get on together? All right. Well, we have our ups and downs. I mean, some days he's better than others. I see. And yesterday was a down. Yeah, it was. Mm. Well, you, you don't know him. He can get on your tit something rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm not making judgment. <laughs> you provide for him? Yeah. You're the breadwinner? Yes. Does he contribute anything? Nothing. <laughs> a very humiliating position for him to be in. No doubt he was a very active man at one time. Well, up until I left school. <laughs> well, that's the picture. An old man alone at home, brooding. His son has taken over as head of the family, outstripped him physically, replaced him, you might say. He feels redundant, unwanted, unloved and deprived. His home life has become intolerable. And so his subconscious mind takes refuge in erasing all memories of it. I think you'll find that, Ryan. Are you a psychiatrist? Good Lord, no. I'm the ear, nose and throat man. <laughs> but I know as much about it as they do. Well, so just tell me, Doctor, is it going to get well? In my opinion, his recovery and future well-being is entirely up to you. How I thought it would be. <laughs> Doesn't he remember anything at all? Apparently not. The only thing he keeps repeating is colour television <laughs> and Charlie Miller. Does that mean anything? Yes, I'm afraid it does. Can I see him now? Yes, of course. Try not to upset him. Hello, Dad. <laughs> That's a stupid thing to do, isn't it? Going one down the streets in this weather. Who are you? It's me, Harold. Harold who? Harold, Harold Stepter. Who's that? Me. <laughs> Never heard of you. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. You have? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> it's me, your son. Well, I don't have no son. Yes, of course you have, me. Harold, don't you recognise me? Uh, I don't have no son. I'm on my own. No, you're not. You've got me, Dad. Don't keep calling me Dad. Uh, sorry. Look, let me try and help. Perhaps something might ring a bell. Yeah. You are Albert Stepton. Never heard of him. Don't interrupt. <laughs> oh, here's a chance. You are Albert Steptoe, and I am Harold Steptoe. And we live in a big house in Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> Where's that? You know where Shepherd's Bush is, it's in London. Where? London. Never heard of it. <laughs> oh, anyway, th th that's where you live, with me. We have this big yard and a stable. What's a stable for? Put the horse in. <laughs> horse? Yeah, horse. Gigi. <laughs> it's a big animal with four great legs, one on each. I know what a horse is. I'm not daft. <laughs> oh, 
can't, can't you remember anything at all? Uh, think. Try. Just a minute. The horse. What was it called? Delilah. Never heard of her. <laughs> well, we don't had her long. Just a couple of weeks. That, that, that's all. But we had one before that. We had him for years. Do you remember his name? Hercules. <laughs> that's it. We've done it. We've broken through. Now, that, that I used to drive him. Do you remember me now? No. <laughs> but I remember the horse. I loved him and he loved me. Yeah. I remember Hercules. Don't remember you at all. <laughs> no, no, of course not. But look, can't, can't you remember anything else? Look, the room downstairs. Now, try to visualise the room. I see a room. And a table. Yes, yes. Chairs. That's right. And up in the corner. Yes, yes. A great big colour television set. <laughs> no, no, that there was so. No, that's funny. I could have sworn there was. Look, Dad. When you get well again, I'm, I'm going to look after you. And I'm... look, I don't know who you are, but it's nice of you to come and visit an old man. <laughs> A lot of people can't be bothered with you once you get old. You're a good boy, whoever you are. And now, if you don't mind, I'm tired. I want to rest. Yes, yes, of course. You go to sleep. I shall come and see you again. Do you remember you? Not yet. I'm taking him home. Do you think that's wise? Don't you think it would be better for both of you if he went into a home? Home? Yes, an old people's home. You must face the possibility that he may never regain his memory, in which case he'd be far better off in a home. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be able to live your own life. I don't want to live my own life. He's my dad. I want to look after him. All right, as you wish. He should be strong enough to leave here on Saturday morning. On Saturday? No, I was going down to Brighton. <laughs> no, no, no. Saturday will be all right. That will be fine. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, what a dump. <laughs> I don't live here, surely. I think I'll go back to the hospital. No, no. <laughs> it's quite nice here. I'm sure you'll get to enjoy it. Here are, you see? You sit there. Do I? I've got a great surprise for you. It's a television! Oh, God, it's a coming home present. Oh, and that's smashing. Here. It's only a 21-inch screen. They come in 23. <laughs> in a 23-inch screen. Oh, I couldn't afford a 23-inch screen. You could have if you hadn't bought that car. Yeah, well, when I sold it back, I lost a lot on it because the fella pointed out things that was wrong with it that weren't wrong with it when I... <laughs> <laughs> what car? Hey? How do you know I bought a car? You're not supposed to know who I am. It, it, it was the television. It brought it all back. I remember now. Oh, Harold, my little boy. 
<laughs> what a good son you are. Lovely present. You done it again, haven't you? You got me over again, haven't you? You never lost the memory at all, did you? I did. I did. It's gone again. Where am I? <laughs> Shut up! What a diabolical woman! Stupid thing to pull! You knew I've always wanted a car. You didn't want a car. This is much better. This is the life. The old fire gun, comfortable chair, colour television. What more could you want? I mean, what else would you have been doing now? At this precise moment, Muriel Daddy. <laughs> oh, what? The weather forecast in colour. How exciting. <laughs> Come and have a look at it. No, thanks. Not that there's an earthquake in Brighton. I don't want to know. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>